Today we are going to have a look at the night journey Al Isra Wal Miraj. I hope I pronounced that correct by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let's have a look. <laughs> Before his birth, he lost his father Within the first three, four, five years of his life, he lost his mother. And everyone who cared for him would depart from his life. That's so sad. Grandfather and uncles. His spouse Khadija radiallahu anha wa The Prophet sallallahu didn't bury one son or two or three or four. Five children, Ya Abdullah. With his own hand, he would place them in the ground. At seeing. You know what's like the sad part? And this is something that only prophets can um, handle. Peace be upon them. If you look at like the stories of all the prophets, peace be upon them, in the Quran, they all came with some really heavy hardships. If you look, for example, at. I, I have another example. Lut alayhi salam, for example, right, with the people of Sodom. His own wife, for example, betrayed him. Like, can you imagine that, like, the mother of your kids is betraying you, right? If you look at the story of Ayub alayhi salam, how he lost everything, right? Like, his wealth, his kids, how he got ill and all that. Like, they, the prophets, they get tests and trials that we could not handle. Like, we would, like, lose our sanity from this. Like, seriously. And what Pro Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through is something that I don't, I don't know anyone that can bear this and, and not break down and, and just be a mess mentally. Like, this is, this is so difficult. And he would place them in the ground. At seeing people who raised him knew of his honesty and trustworthiness for no reason claiming him unstable, dishonest, fraudulent. That you see these people, their footmarks are all over you. They're in every part of your life. They know you like they know the back of their hand. It's not that they deny that you have come with truth, but it's that they have a distaste for the truth and a distrust to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a hatred for what is right. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked into the hearts of the people of the earth. And it's as if a, the response to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that if no one on earth wants you, come up to the heavens and see what your honor and place is. Umar would enter upon him in his masjid as he was sleeping on a straw mat that had bruised his blessed skin sallallahu alaihi wasallam and umar was a tough man and he saw the back of the prophet sallam scratched and bruised and discolored from laying on this yes by the harshness of the dunya when the world could be at his feet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stayed humble. Umar wept. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, the kings of Persia, the Romans, they have this Naeem, wa anta Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet. You know, you know what this teaches us? And this is something that's actually a motivation for us as well, if you, if you think about it that like yeah you can have like riches in this world you can live like a luxurious life but if you become arrogant and you stop being humble you can also become corrupt right so if you get spoiled by this dunya too much you maybe lose your way and i tell you guys something i know people from from back in the day from school and once they had a higher degree and they had a certain job they started walking differently from from how they used to. Like they used to be like very nice and kind people when they were younger. They would talk with everyone, hang out with everyone. And as they grew older and reached certain position in certain jobs, they became arrogant and they became 
very undesirable people by personality. So yeah, don't let this dunya or your wealth corrupt you. May Allah all keep us safe from, from getting too spoiled and then cor being corrupted by this dunya. I mean, Allah, the kings of Persia, the Romans, they have this na'im, wa anta Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet would say, wa ma li wa li dunya. Yeah, what, what do you need from this dunya? dunya? It's just temporarily. He faced as an individual, what an ummah faces in its collection, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Mecca refused to accept, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam determined to head out to the people of Ta'if. And as he entered upon them, hoping to have a moment of an audience to speak in truthfulness and honesty about faith, they released upon him the imbeciles of their society. Wow. Who they had given boulders and rocks, and they said, when you see him, pellet him. And the Prophet ﷺ was so injured by it. He was bleeding. And he had to walk right? that mile of condemnation to lead himself out of Ta'if, being abused and hurled until a Christian invited him to a place of refuge and sat him in a place under the shade of some trees and gave him something to eat and some water to bathe and to cleanse himself with. The Prophet made a dua. O most gracious of those who show graciousness and favor. O oh, the merciful of those who show mercy, to who have you left me? To an enemy who seeks to obliterate me? Have you given me over to relatives of mine who you've subjugated me to, O oh Allah? Nevertheless, O oh Allah, if no anger is the cause of this, I am willing to withstand it, O oh Allah. Although I petition you for your mercy, which is more comprehensive and expansive for me, I seek my protection in, in the light of your face that gives radiance to everything in the heavens and the earth. That you don't bring down any of your anger upon me, O oh Allah. And it's at that moment, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked into the hearts of the people of the earth. And it's as if a, the response to the Prophet ﷺ was that if no one on earth wants you, come up to the heavens and see what your honor and place is. In that year of Al-Isra' wal miraj which is unknown definitively to the ulama, Allah opened for him a gateway out of this worldly life into the upper heavens. Glorified is Allah. In full control is Allah. Who has transported in a night journey. Jibreel descends to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know it's like uh, crazy. So this all happened like in one night and I think the duration was if I'm not mistaken one year. So one night felt like one year or something like that, right? And this just shows like how powerful also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He can like make one moment be like an eternity if he wanted to, right? Like this is like so mind-blowing, right? And there are also like stories of people that were, was, were they like sleeping in a cave, I believe? And, and then they, they slept and it felt like one night, but like hundred years or some time period has passed. Allahu alam. But there was like one story of some people they were put to sleep and they wake up like hundred years or something later. So yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the, the he, he's able to move people in, uh, in, in time and it just feels to them like a moment. And this is the same with like the grave, right? Like some people are terrified by the idea that if you enter the grave in Islam, that uh, you're gonna have to wait for hundreds of years and you get bored because you're just waiting for something to happen. And from what I've learned from like lessons and stuff, 
um, it's like this, that the time in the grave actually feels not so long as it actually is, because Allah will make it feel like a short amount of time for you. Yeah. So yeah, this is like, this is mind blowing when you think about it, because for us, sometimes if we have an appointment and the appointment is in two weeks, right? You're like every day nervous. Like, when is this appointment? I want to go there. Or when does my school or new job start or something, right? And you're always looking like each day passing. Like sometimes you look in the morning, oh, when is, when will it be? And then in the evening, you look, when will it be? And you get like nervous, you get like uneasy because you want to go somewhere or you have an appointment right and you wish it happens right now maybe you're looking forward to something right or maybe like your loved one returning from a trip but you have to wait two weeks until this person comes back so you wish the time could pass faster and even two weeks can feel long right but Allah is the one that can make even like a, a long period of time feel like a short period of time or a short period of time feel like a long period of time like here with the night journey right like it felt longer than a night for sure descends <coughs> to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and operates on him jibril opens his chest and washes his heart with the water of zamzam and then the Prophet ﷺ is cleansed of anger and hatred and Iman and hikmah is added to his heart. After being cleansed, the Prophet ﷺ is summoned by Jibreel to Al-Buraq. That the Prophet would say that it would take its one step to the extent of the horizon. And subhanAllah, as he comes to ride Al-Buraq, it begins to cause a stir. And Jibreel is the one who settles it down and says, Mount him, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When the Prophet sallallahu arrives in Bayt al-Maqdis, Jibreel orders the Prophet sallallahu to tie his buraq to the ring that the Prophets used to always tie their animals in. Wow. After having led the Prophets of Allah in prayer, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ascends. You know, this is actually also mind-blowing. Did you guys know that? Maybe some of you know it already, but uh, some don't. Did you know that uh, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was praying with the other prophets? Peace be upon them. He even led them in prayer, right? Like, they all met each other during this night journey. And that also shows, like, how our ummah, no matter what time period, is connected. Like, we even have the chance uh, to see Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in paradise and we never met, right? Just like here, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was able to meet the other prophets. Peace be upon them. Prophets used to always tie their animals in. After having led the prophets of Allah in prayer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ascends. The heavens gates are closed. The angels of the first heaven, they say, Who are you? To Jibreel, alayhi salam, Allahu Akbar. To Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi who are you? He says, Ana Jibreel. He identifies himself. Wa ma'i Muhammad. Have you been sent to bring him up? Or is he allowed to ascend? Yes, he's been asked for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only after that that the angels open the first heaven and greet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with Salaam. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is greeted with Salaam by the angels, each and every one of them smiles at him. And each and every one of them precedes him with Salaam. Until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees the angel Malik. He doesn't know it is the guardian of Jahannam. And the Prophet sees him, an angel who has a sternness, an uncomfortable persona. The Prophet is taken aback and asks Jibreel, who is this? And Jibreel says, this is Malik, the governor, the maintainer of Jahannam. Ya Muhammad, precede him with salam. In the first heaven, he meets Adam alayhi salam. In the second heaven, Isa wa Yahya. In the third heaven, he meets Harun, in the next Idris, in the next Musa, in the next Ibrahim alayhi salam at the final heaven. 
And the Prophet ﷺ remarks that he saw no man who looked closer to him in likeness than Ibrahim. Wow. And Ibrahim was sitting with his back leaning against Al Bayt Al Ma'mur, the Kaaba of the heavens. Oh. And then the Prophet ﷺ is invited to Sidrat Al Muntaha, to the Lot tree, which is the furthest extent that Jibreel can go to. And no one before him or after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has transcended that barrier. And the Prophet sallallahu is brought towards Allah and communes with Allah and speaks with Allah. You know what I'm like looking so forward to and may Allah give us all this opportunity. I mean like uh, to also let us into the highest stage of uh, paradise. I mean like I'm really looking forward to seeing Allah. <gasps> Like, uh, like we cannot imagine right now how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks like. But I have such a strong curiosity in my heart because I'm a person, like, I want to know everything. I'm, I'm, I'm a person, I'm addicted to wisdom and knowledge, right? And just the fact I can see an angel or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it drives me crazy because I have such a strong curiosity. Like, I really want to see. Uh, like, I'm a person, like, I know... I like to know everything and I'm like fascinated with like a lot of things, be it like animal life, insect life and all that. And I'm just like knowledge hungry, you could say, right? So just the fact that I know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks like, like oh, an angel, it's like mind blowing. Like I'm getting very hyped for it and excited. So yeah, this is like one of the things I'm really looking forward to because then I finally know, you know, like I, I'm trying to imagine, but my brain can't imagine how Allah looks like. So yeah and speaks with Allah, the first is that the Prophet ﷺ is given by Allah directly the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Oh. And the second was the writing down of Salah upon our Ummah. Oh, did you guys know that um, if you seek protection against um, harm from jinn and stuff, right? Or like jinn, you can also use the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah and yeah. This is also very, very good protection, actually. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. And the second was the writing down of Salah upon our Ummah. Fifty prayers a day. And the Prophet accepted it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wait, fifty? There must be a mistake. And when he descended, Musa asked him, What have you been given? He said, Fifty Salah. He said, Go back. <laughs> Allah Azza wa Jal, I've been tested with Bani Israel. Your Ummah will not be able to do 50 Salah, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine that would have been final, guys. 50 prayers. How, how often would that happen? A day has like, what, 24 hours? Would it be like, yo, that would be crazy. It would be like each 5 or 10 minutes. <gasps> Wow, you, you would be forced, to, you would be literally forced to use the shortest uh, sur surah of the, the Quran to recite after Al-Fatiha. Because otherwise you would not even manage in time to do uh, freaking 50. Like, how can you do like 50 salah? Like, of course it's impossible. Like, Musa alayhi salam, he's totally correct about this. I don't think anyone can do that. And how do you even make uh, duas in sujood? You don't even have time. You have to get back up. Then the next one starts. When do you shower? When do you eat? When do you work? Like if a day is not 24 hours, but like 70 hours or something, then it's possible. He returns to Allah, not once or twice or three, from 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10. Go back, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will go back. To wow. five. Go back, Ya Muhammad. No. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I have a shyness between myself and Allah. Five is okay. Would you have believed if he came that next morning and said, and there were Sahaba who recanted faith. There were people who accepted faith and on account of this test, they lost it. And this is where men were made like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu where he became a Siddiq. I believe he brings news from the heavens. How can I not believe that Allah in the heavens would take him to him? I believe in much greater than this. 
If I can believe that Jibreel descends, why can't I believe that Jibreel can escort him up? If I can believe in the news from the heavens, I can believe in what he has said. If he said it, it's truth. I don't even have to hear it from him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Isra' wal Mi'raj is about your Iman. Do you have that belief in the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you have that love for Bayt al-Maqdis? Do you have that diligence in your Salah? That willingness to honor Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala? And finally, do you, my dear brother and sister, have the desire to connect with the Quran on a greater level than just the surface? And to look into the word of Allah and to extract from it the lessons that will upright and adjust my life and your life. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins, hides our shame, and cures our hearts from all evil and neglect. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wow, this was so good. Let me give this one a thumbs up. And there's also something that we learned from this that we should never forget. Why do we have five prayers? Not only is here the origin mentioned, but we also have to be grateful to every single prophet, peace be upon them. Because by, for us, we follow all the prophets. We respect all the prophets in Islam. Like They are all very, very important and they all care for us and even for all of us that are to come in the future. If you look at this, for example, how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, met with Musa salam and Musa salam said, hey, you should uh, go back and reduce the amount of prayers because they're not able to bear. Do you guys know if Musa salam would not have helped us with that, we would be at 50 prayers right now. So we have to respect every single prophet. And that's why we say always peace be upon them, right? Because they are all very, very important in Islam. We also love Jesus, alayhi salam. Because some Christians are saying, Oh, you have Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Jesus is not uh, important to you. That's not true. We also respect and love Jesus, alayhi salam. All the prophets have a great role. And all the teachings of them and stories are very motivational for us. And they're also making us feel great and giving us truth. So, yeah. But yo, this was very, very good. And yeah, Allah is able to extend the time or make it feel short for you. Like there are several hadiths and stories where certain things happened, right? And they happened in either a long period of time, but they felt short or a short period of time. And they were like making like it was made feel like a long, long time, right? So yeah. This is like some, like just, just a small glimpse of the power that Allah has. Like we can't imagine the power of Allah because it's infinite. Like there's no, no maximum, right? Like Allah never gets exhausted. Even maintaining the whole universe doesn't make uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tired, right? So that's crazy. But yeah, so now we know also the origin of the five prayers in Islam and how they came to that number. We have to thank Musa alayhi salam for that. But yeah, guys, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I will see you guys next time.